All right, let's go ahead and kick it off. Uh, everyone, thank you so much for attending today. My name is Brian Tobin. I am a product manager here at Churchring. Today we are joined by Scott, who's the president of Brandpoint. Uh, Scott's going to be leading the presentation today, and we're going to talk about a, uh, a lot of cool things that will hopefully make you get more out of your content marketing and just marketing strategy in general. So we're going to knock some of the housekeeping out real quick, and then we'll get to the fun part, which is the presentation. So the audience today is made up of Chartspring agency partners. So if we've talked before, very excited to have you here. I uh, hope we learn something cool and kind of a new way to use Chartspring to, well, not even Chartspring, more of the content strategy and how we can increase brand awareness and increase closes, and increase anything we need our leads to do by using uh, the really practice that we'll learn here today. So we are here again to learn about Brandpoint. We're going to talk about content best practices. There's some real world case studies that we'll talk about during the session today. And then we have a cool kind of summarization of the team that you should look to build if you're looking to make the most out of your marketing technology. Uh, all phone lines are muted. It's strictly for efficiency, so we don't have any interruptions. We want you to engage, so please ask questions via the chat box. Engage with us on social Twitter. Our hashtag is SharpTweet, or you can just tweet at Churchspring. We will distribute this webinar as well as the slides after this call. Uh, there's a survey that will happen during the session today. Please uh, interact and engage and let us know feedback so we can make sure that these are valuable for you moving forward. Now, as this is a partners-only webinar, you can all attend our Springboard Live, which will be this Friday. Those are those weekly how-to training sessions that we conduct. Uh, in this session, we're going to talk about if you do any sort of uh, conference, if you use conferences as a marketing tactic, marketing strategy, how you can make the most out of the leads that you get from those conferences, meaning re-engaging them post-conference. Uh, if you do the conference annually, re-reaching out to them for the next conference the follow-up year, a great session. I do recommend that you attend that. If you uh, would like to join a session, you know, we of course have those partner-led sessions that we host. You can email Nicole Levy at Nicole at Sharpspring.com, and we'd love to see if we can get you on the calendar to conduct a partner-led webinar. Uh, and with that, Scott, I'm going to pass this over to you, and you can take the controls and rock and roll. Great. Thanks so much, Brian. And uh, thank you to all of you who are taking some time out of your day to spend time with us and learn more about the the DNA of effective marketing. Um, the, it's cold and rainy and there's snow in the forecast in, in Minneapolis today. So I, I hope where uh, you guys are calling in from that the weather is much nicer for you guys. So during our time together today, I want to discuss our perspective on the DNA of effective marketing. Uh, I'm going to talk about a marketing experiment that really showcases the power of content and marketing automation. And finally, I'm going to touch on two common content marketing pitfalls and how you can avoid them, hopefully. Uh, my goal today is that each of you can take away one or two ideas to help make your marketing programs even more successful this year. Before I do all that, uh, I want to share a little bit about Brandpoint. Uh, we are a content marketing services and software company. From a services perspective, we specialize in helping our clients with content strategy, content creation, and design work. We also have a sponsored content, native advertising, and earned media practice. As we all know, marketing automation really requires a ton of great content. Marketing automation users cite not being able to create enough content as one of the number one barriers to having a successful program. Creating content to support your marketing automation is a focus area for Brandpoint and a problem that we can solve for you. From a software perspective, we developed an online content marketing platform called Brandpoint Hub. And Brandpoint Hub helps teams collaborate and manage their planning, editorial calendars, content creation, and publishing of their content all in one easy to use tool. The Hub also reports on the effectiveness of each piece of content that you publish. Using the Hub saves our clients an average of 74 minutes of staff time 
on every piece of content that they create. So it really more than pays for itself. For more information on any of our services or software, please visit us at brandpoint.com. So we're here today to talk about the DNA of effective marketing. And we believe that the marriage of content and marketing automation is really at that core of the DNA of effective marketing today. We know we're not the only ones that think like this because marketing automation is exploding right now. Uh, as of this presentation, there are over 100,000 companies using marketing automation software. Before I dig into the presentation, I want to share an experiment that caught our attention last fall. Lead Pages is a software as a service company based right here in Minneapolis, and they specialize in creating landing page and web app templates for lead generation. And they, re they recently conducted uh, what I thought was a really innovative sales and marketing experiment. Clay Collins, the uh, one of the lead pages co-founders made a bet and his bet was that a content team of four people could outperform an 80 person sales team at the at a fraction of the cost it sounds pretty attractive right so to do this they employed two core tactics one they tracked and invested in content much like you would a sales team. So performance was shared publicly on a sales board. They invested more resources in their top performing content types and, and topics. Two, they designed every piece of content to capture an email. And when I say every piece of content, I really mean every piece of content. Uh, they even made their blog available uh, for download by entering an email. So they, they got really good and really disciplined about lead capture. The results that they saw were pretty powerful. Uh, they saw a quick payback on their investment, and their cost per acquisition was 5% of a typical enterprise software as a service company. If that doesn't make a case for content and marketing automation, I don't know what does. Now, I'm not advocating um, getting rid of your salespeople or anything like that. To me, the message in this was one of efficiency. You know, how can we make our marketing more efficient? How can we help our salespeople be more efficient through content? And I, I think this case study uh, makes a pretty strong argument for that. So the lead pages example, I think, really underscores a seismic shift that is happening in sales and marketing today. With quality content and marketing automation in your toolkit, marketing is playing a much bigger role in the sales process than it ever has before. Today, marketing is handily, handing your sales team a much more qualified sales ready lead that is already interacted with your brand multiple times. This is why marketing automation is such a powerful tool. It allows us to better manage and track each customer's interaction and then really help our salespeople jump into the funnel in a much more meaningful place. And, and salespeople like that better. They'd much rather interact uh, with a client who is further down the funnel. So with, with all its promise, um, there are some misconceptions about what marketing automation is. Um, I, I know this audience really gets this concept, but when I ask companies today whether or not they're using marketing automation, I still hear them say, well, yeah, we use MailChimp or Constant Contact or some other kind of uh, email marketing software, and they call it marketing automation, and that's just not the case. Now, while automated emails obviously play an important role, marketing automation is, is different in several key 
ways than just being an email platform. Uh, for us, the most appealing aspects of marketing automation were, um, you know, with the software, we can weigh different interactions and content types more heavily than others and automatically give our prospects a grade or a score based on their, their actions. Um, it was really effective for us. We can gather valuable sales intelligence based on what content a prospect is engaging with. We can automate a content journey by providing prospects with supporting content based on their engagements. And we're able to uh, create our own custom landing pages and lead capture forms to really help us much more effectively get prospects into our funnel. And, and the list goes on, and, and you maybe have different reasons that you like it, but these are the a lot of the core ones that, that work for BrandPoint and the, that we hear from our customers on. So hopefully we've established marketing automation is pretty awesome. Um, there are two core pitfalls that we find are just all too common for thousands of organizations. Um, if you only focus on the promise of marketing automation, without putting the right team in place or investing in the required content, your program is just not going to generate the results that you want. And I know, I know we have made that mistake early on and, and you know, when we, we started down a journey of using marketing automation for our business, I think we tend to get enamored with all the magical things that the software can do without looking at all of the structure and content that is required to power all of it. So let's take a look at um, some different ways that you can avoid these common pitfalls. So the, the first tip is to hire a pro. So Unless you have a staff member on your team that has deep experience in configuring your specific marketing automation software and they understand your CRM at a deep level, self-implementation self is usually a recipe for disaster. And like I said, we learned this the hard way. While um, at BrandPoint, we know content marketing better than most. Um, we are certainly not experts in software implementation, and so we needed help. Um, I know that SharpSpring has a, a really robust suite of tools and resources to guide you um, through the process. They also have over 200 approved agency partners that can provide hands-on help when it comes to configuration and implementation. At BrandPoint, we really began to see much better results with our own marketing automation much more quickly when we worked with an implementation partner to get our program in place. So tip two, marketing automation, it, it really, uh, to quote Hillary Clinton, it takes a village of people. Um, so you really have to build a capable team. So what roles do you need in your, in your organization to make your, your marketing automation work? Even for small to mid-sized businesses, effective marketing automation really does take a, a team of people to both establish and run on an ongoing basis. From our perspective, we've boiled down the ideal marketing automation team into five core roles. So, so the first seat is your CRM software admin. You need somebody on your team that is an expert at configuring and using your CRM software. This person is heavily involved in configuring the way your CRM and your marketing automation platform communicates. And we found that this is really a key, key role. Uh, they're also gonna train your team on how to use these tools effectively and assist with ongoing CRM maintenance and, and hygiene as your business needs change. So pretty key role to have that, that person in place. 
Next is your marketing automation specialist. Now, at first, this may be a shared role between your implementation partner and your internal specialist who you put in place um, who will help optimize your daily use of the software. After your initial uh, configuration process concludes, the marketing automation specialist who is internal uh, will become your resource and your subject matter expert on using the software on a day-to-day -day basis. So very, very key role in the process. Let's not forget the sales leader. One of the most important responsibilities that your sales leader has is in establishing protocols for your sales teams to help ensure database quality. And this is a huge issue because if, if we're you know, not uh, using good list hygiene practices, uh, you're just not gonna be as effective as you could be. Um, they're also going to establish lead scoring criteria and thresholds that really establish when is a lead, when has it been nurtured enough to be handed off to a salesperson? You know, when have they engaged enough and what does that look like? And that answer is likely different for every organization, depending on what your sales cycle looks like, um, you know, uh, what your average transaction size is, what, what have you. So they're also gonna train your sellers on how to use the data from the software to better inform their sales strategies. And they're gonna provide constant feedback to your marketing automation specialist to help that person further optimize both your strategy and the content that you're using to power it. Next is your marketing leader. So the marketing leader um, is really focused on uh, establishing success metrics. Marketing automation is all about generating measurable results. Typically your marketing leader is going to really establish what those benchmarks are. Uh, this person also is going to translate your marketing goals into automation strategies. And he or she will generally be the person who is in charge of uh, creating buyer journeys that will help guide the strategy. Typically, your marketing automation specialist is going to report to this position. Finally, we need content to power all this. So um, as, as we look at marketing automation, it really does require a variety of content assets to be used at different stages along that buyer's journey. Now, you can either hire internal resources to help you produce all of this content that you're gonna need, or you can hire a content agency, like Brandpoint as an example, uh, that specializes in developing content for marketing automation programs. To give you an idea of how this works for our own marketing at, at Brandpoint, we have a content team that works closely with our marketing automation specialist to create blogs and gated content and automated emails that support all of our campaigns. So those are the five roles that really every marketing automation program needs. Now, depending on the size of your organization and the complexity of your needs, the same person may be able to own uh, one or more of these roles. They may be able to wear a couple of hats, but typically all of these roles need to be covered by somebody. So next, it's really important to understand your audience. After you've built your team, you have to identify who that audience is and map out exactly how do they go from being a prospect to a customer. 
So as marketers, we can only succeed when we deliver messages that are relevant to our audience. And we can't do that unless we know exactly who we're talking to. So in the left-hand column, this is where most people start. Uh, this represents one message to your entire audience. It might be relevant for some of the audience, but it's probably not going to resonate with everybody in your, in your database. In the right-hand column is really what a well-defined audience looks like. It represents, in this case, five unique segments of your audience uh, receiving five unique marketing messages. Now, it may be daunting to you to go, if you're not doing a ton of segmentation today, to go from just one big audience, one message, to really getting hyper-focused. Start by trying to break them into two segments, you know, and, and then once you've got them into two, can you, can you narrow it down and break them into, into three segments? The goal is to be as segmented and as hyper-focused as you possibly can be. But don't feel like you have to do that overnight. Start by cutting it in half if, if you can. Getting to that next level of message relevancy is absolutely worth it, but it's not an easy overnight task usually. So ideally, this is what we're working for. Um, a true one-to-one -one communication between your brand and your, your customers. Uh, what I think makes marketing automation such a powerful tool is that it helps us really take the efficiency of one-to-many communication, you know, where we're delivering one message to uh, uh, many people, and it combines that efficiency with the effectiveness of a one-to-one -one dialogue, much like our salespeople have with our, our customers. So in order to work your way down to that extremely sophisticated level of relevance and personalization, we really do have to know exactly who we're talking to. And that's where buyer personas come in. So on the, on the path to creating a more relevant message, clearly defined buyer personas are gonna do the heavy lifting for you. Uh, some details that we like to include for each of our buyer personas, um, we're looking at their, their geo, their demo, and their psychographics. We're looking at company size. We're looking at some details about what their role entire, entails. Uh, we look for key pain points. What are their problems? And, and finally, what types of content are going to be useful to them? These important buyer personas really help our writers then understand both who they are writing for and how to best provide value to that audience. When we're engaging with a client to develop content, uh, persona development is always our starting point um, when we're creating that content. And we've developed several content assets that can help walk our, our clients through what that process looks like. Uh, so I, I really love this, this image. It's, it's a simplification of visualizing how your content is going to really resonate differently with different personas. Um, you know, so as an example, um, people that are in your C-suite persona, um, a message around saving money or creating immediate measurable value uh, is probably going to resonate better with them. But if we look at like your manager persona as an example, they're dealing with issues on a day-to-day -day basis. They want their pain point solved. They they have a, a an issue um, that they're they're living with that you know the solution to that problem is gonna resonate more with them than maybe saving money would. Um, so the point here is for each of your personas, you're likely gonna have a unique set of messaging that is tailored to the, the psychographics and all of the other aspects of the persona. Um, and the key is, this is an evolutionary process. You know, I think 
using something like this is a great starting point to map out what that can look like and then test against it. It's an evolutionary process to really hone in on what core messages are really going to best resonate with each of each of your personas. So once we understand those client personas, then we can really start to map out what does that buyer's journey look like and what content assets are really necessary for each step along the way. So as the customer journey progresses, we can leverage dynamic content based on the prospect's behavior as they move down the funnel. I'll touch on what content types are generally best for each stage in a second. But as you can see from this visual, content really does support each stage of the funnel from awareness to decision and ultimately results in a much more qualified sales lead. In the context of marketing automation, we really do believe that your content can become one of your most effective sales tools. One of the ways that we've seen this in action is greater visibility and alignment between our marketing and our sales teams. Uh, our salespeople are able to really quickly identify what messages are resonating with our prospects and provide better feedback to the marketing team as they continue to optimize and tweak our messaging. It also helps us to identify and invest in the types of content that are more impactful in the journey. With this added visibility that marketing automation provides, we're able to see exactly the types of content that our prospects are engaging with so we can give our salespeople a more valuable place to start the conversation. So as Spider-Man's uncle said, you know, with great power comes great responsibility, we don't want to be creepy about this because um, people don't like to feel like they're stocked online. Um, and so that is a training thing we want to do with our salespeople. If somebody visits a page on your website, we don't want to immediately call them and say, you know, we noticed you were just visiting this page. That generally doesn't work. So tip four, plan for your content development. Um, Great content doesn't just happen, and you really do need to have a plan for it. Um, so marketing automation is really about delivering the right content to the right people, and you need a content strategy to power what that looks like. Um, if, you, if this audience kind of falls in with statistics, according to the Content Marketing Institute, 37% of the B2B marketers on this call um, and 40% of the B2C marketers on the call will have a documented content marketing plan. If you're in the percentage that doesn't have a plan, this potentially leaves you investing time and money into marketing automation software without a good game plan for how you're going to create the, the content required to power all of this. So recent data from the Aberdeen Group really confirms that content is playing a larger role in the sales process. With each customer touch point, there's a different piece of content that nurtures that, that prospect along, its, along their journey. And without a plan for doing that, it can easily spiral out of control. So here are the most common types of content that really serve the needs of your audience at each stage of the funnel. Uh, for us, blogs do a lot of heavy lifting. Uh, they, they really live at the top of the funnel. Uh, we use them both for a traffic generation tool to answer high-level questions, to establish trust and thought leadership. Uh, and then as we progress down the funnel, we make use of gated content for lead capture and, and providing more valuable content to, um, to your, your audience. Uh, and then downstream from that, we get into automated drips with supporting content. And this is where um, the marketing automation software really shines because the 
the level of uh, dynamic interaction um, would really be impossible without good software in terms of you know making those decision based triggers to send them different emails based on what they're they're responding to um, and then as as the prospect progresses down, we may get into a brand filter offer where you know we've engaged with them enough that we have a really good idea of what they're interested in, what their pain points are. So we may, may want to start you know, introducing product solutions to them. And then as we get to the bottom of the funnel, we may wanna start looking at making an offer to them. And, and then this is where um, their lead score is usually gonna to progress to the point where it makes sense for a salesperson to get involved. I think it's really important to understand that even though I've kind of presented this um, in a linear fashion here, it's extremely dynamic. And so as you think about the different combinations of customer engagements and the content required to support it, you can see where it can really quickly um, require a ton of content. Uh, to kind of see this in action, I'll share a little bit about the simplest campaign that we're running right now. It's a campaign for our content marketing software, BrandPoint Hub. Um, so at any time, you can go to our website and sign up for a free trial of our software, uh, which I encourage you guys to do at brandpoint.com. During that trial period, we send out seven automated emails to nurture that trial towards converting and buying our, our software. The first email fires when you hit sign up, and the, the last email goes out a day before the trial expires. Sounds pretty simple, right? It's just seven emails. Um, you shouldn't really need a whole lot to do that. But five of those seven emails contain at least one other piece of content. So that's eight pieces of content within the emails themselves. We have two downloadable templates that, that we offer our signups. We promote three different eBooks. We have a case study. Uh, we share some blog content and a product overview page. So in total, that becomes 15 pieces of content for this one really short and simple campaign. And it doesn't account for the testing and optimization process that we went through to really land on what our current control is of these 15 pieces of content. There's a lot of other emails and, and associated content that led up to this point for this current control. And now that we have a control in place, we're continually testing against it with new content. So if you extrapolate that over multiple campaigns, over multiple months, it becomes pretty clear how content development really plays a huge part in whether or not your process is gonna work for you. So I've shared a lot of information. Here's something that um, I hope can put it into perspective. Um, Gartner predicted that by 2020, three short years, customers are going to manage 85% of their relationship with a company without ever talking to a human. That's an amazing statistic to me. So um, let this serve as a call to arms. Uh, the, I believe the companies that are going to thrive in this content-driven sales process that we are evolving to are the ones that can incorporate the power of content with the intelligence of marketing automation into their strategy. I don't know how you're gonna win if you're not doing that in your organization. So to recap, marketing automation can be an incredibly powerful tool. And we found that to make your program work, you really do need a skilled team of people to implement it and maintain it. And yes, you need a ton of great content to power it. While that may seem like a big investment, especially if you've already invested in software, 
we truly believe that the right team and a high volume of quality content is really what's going to allow you to take full advantage of what that platform can do for your sales and, and for your business. So um, before we move into questions, um, I have a special offer as a thank you to all of you for attending this webinar and listening to me for 40 minutes. Between now and the end of May, all SharpSpring users that mention this webinar will receive a 10% discount off their purchase of a custom content package from BrandPoint. Simply send us an email at contact at brandpoint.com or submit a request online by visiting our, our website, brandpoint.com, mention SharpSpring webinar, and we'll get you started. So with that, I want to thank you all so much for your time today. Uh, I hope that you all got one nugget that you can take away from this that can help make your marketing program more effective this year. And now we'd like to open it up to your questions. Yes, yeah, so we had a, a few questions come in during the chat, and if, if folks want to throw some more in here right now while we go ahead and, and assemble this, we'll uh, we'll start going through them. A few things I do want to to reiterate. First, fantastic presentation and a concept that we talk about a lot here with Chargefring because the the technology side, you know, we have that I think you really captured the intent with content driven sales process is a a marriage of the power of content and the intelligence of marketing automation. Because you, you need both to really make it effective and capture your audience. And then, again, MA and content, using the right content targeted to the right people, and then going further, making sure that we're sending that at the right time. That's how we get the biggest benefit from that sort of marriage. So we had a few questions come in. Uh, what we're going to do is I'll just read them off to you, and then we can uh, go from here. So the first one that came in, so if – uh, we only had the resources to create one content type out of everything that you mentioned, ebooks, uh, case studies, blogs. Where would you recommend that someone focuses their efforts initially? Yeah. Tough question because without knowing what you have for demand generation in place, so what, what I'll, I'll make the assumption that you have a website that is well optimized and you're driving traffic to that website. Um, with that assumption, my suggestion would be to really invest in some good gated content. Um, you know, one great piece of gated content that you can promote both on your website, you can promote it socially, would, would be my starting point to get people into your funnel. Um, if, if you don't have the traffic equation solved, um, the easiest place to start would be to start blogging on a regular basis and start getting that message out there or start building some traffic to your website. Um, blogs really serve as, um, you know, great search fodder for your organic traffic. And they're really the, the fuel that powers your social channels to share and nurture with your audience socially. And the uh, as regards to the gated content uh, example that you talked about, that works so well with Chargefing because if we get people either clicking on emails and getting content through that method of, uh, of, of a gated nature or filling out forms to get access to that content, we then have tracking that's been established. We know who that lead is. We'll see all of their site activity. All of that can go to increment lead scoring, set them into other automation campaigns that we'll set up. So yeah, if, if we're already driving traffic to the site, I, I have the same recommendation. Go with gated content. If we're more so on the how do I get traffic, I think blogs are the recommendation for kind of the first one. So the second question that we have is is a good uh, – it, it kind of picks up the story where that first question left off. So let's say uh, I'm a company. And I have, you know, I've done all the things that we're supposed to do. So I have a website. I'm using a blog. I have my social sites that I have content being distributed on. Now, from an organizational perspective, if I'm trying to organize that into a content strategy, how do I start? Where do I start? And what would you recommend as the best practice? Yeah, we always recommend to our clients begin with personas because that 
if you don't understand who your personas are, it's going to be really tough to develop a cogent strategy on, on how to communicate them. Like when we're doing a content strategy for our clients, we, we look at a lot of different things. We, we are looking at who are their competitors, their competitive set, where are their search opportunities. Um, you know, there's a ton of things that we look at, but as it, as it relates to where do you start um, to hone in on an effective strategy, it, it has to start with personas. It's uh, it's refreshing to hear you say that because I, I give the same recommendation on other presentations that we do. And with working with companies, it's it's what we found to be the good starting point. If you don't know who your audience is, how they find your brand, and what unique about your service product offering is, is compelling to them, then no matter what marketing content we make, we're not making it with any strategic uh, goal in mind. So I 100% agree, persona identification, even if it's just splitting those into two groups initially, will help right. because you know group A might have a USP of one and group B might have a USP of two. And by sending that unique message to those different groups, it helps drive conversions, drive clicks, all that fun stuff that we talked about. Absolutely, so, yeah, great questions. The last question that we had come in is, uh, it, actually it kind of goes with that gated content story. So in regards to gated content, should we be putting lead captures in front of all content or what would be a good recommendation of a, a percentage distribution of what's gated and what's not gated? It, it depends on what your goal is, right? So if, you're, if your goal is, you know what, we just want to increase site traffic, um, maybe you have less, a lower percentage of gated content. I just want to get great content out there and share it and hope that people will find their way into our funnel. Um, we're of the mindset more often than not, we, if we have invested in creating a great piece of content, we want to have some exchange um, for providing that content to our customers so we can continue that marketing conversation with them. Uh, so in terms of a, a set percentage, I think it's going to really depend on, on the, on the individual businesses and what their their goals of their program are, I would err on gating, um, you know, really in depth content that you know we spend a lot of time and money producing uh, to get people into the funnel so you can take advantage of the power of the software that you have to continue that marketing conversation. I will say with that, one of the use cases I've seen with using marketing technology is uh, a limit on the the what we'll call free content that you give to an audience. So someone will call it a, a login just using a simple form. And when they logged in, they're, of course, tracked and will have uh, some sort of counter field that increments every time they look at some certain piece of content. And they get five right. unique pieces of content to look at. Once they hit that five, we then use dynamic content to then limit assets six through infinity, meaning we give them the ability to get their feet wet with our brand and understand and then we limit what they can see at a certain point by using the technology platform that's kind of powering the uh, the intelligence of the content strategy. Right. Yeah. Much like a uh, a newspaper model where you get exactly. ten articles free free per month. Uh, you know. So at Brandpoint, we um, you know our blogs are open to the public, and then we typically will gate our white papers and eBooks and you know and the much more in depth content pieces that we've we've produced. And it's the the top of the funnel. What you, from what I took, what you said, the top of the funnel stuff is more easily accessible. Kind of answering standard questions, getting an idea of the brand uh, identity. But then as they go further through the funnel, that's when we start gating the content because it be, it starts becoming more real that these might be an actual lead who will want to use our services. Right. Exactly. All right. Uh, those are the questions that came in. Uh, again, Scott, thank you so much. It was a fantastic presentation. For everyone who's still on the line, I have contact information up here. If you have a question for Scott, you can reach out. There's this information there. If you have questions about SharpSpring and maybe how you can deploy the strategy and concepts we talked about today using the SharpSpring platform, you can reach out to myself. Scott, any closing remarks before you go ahead and end the presentation? Uh, no, just thank you everybody for taking the time to uh, spend some time with us, and and I, I hope this jogged some ideas on on how you can make your marketing program better.
I have the same same goal, and I hope it did too. Everyone, thank you again for attending, and we will hopefully see everyone here on the Spring World Live this Friday. Scott, you have a great afternoon, and everyone have a great afternoon as well. Thanks, everybody.